the striking thing about last night is that we all thought, everybody, that we knew what the worst case and best case scenarios were, and none of them involved Joe Biden ending up with a delegate lead. Well, it's actually one of the more remarkable 72 hours in American politics, maybe not just in recent history, in, in a long time. I don't think we've ever seen somebody do this well from where they were 72 hours ago yeah. with no advertising, very little staff on the ground. Right. Do you know that they weren't even tracking in South Carolina? They didn't have the money to poll. Right. Okay, yes. that's how crazy this is. Yes. But how's Joe Biden overcome all of that? Momentum has always been the king in presidential politics. And I think what happened was between Saturday and Tuesday, momentum Trump money, momentum Trump organization, Biden's rivals get out. It was a perfect storm of awesomeness for Joe Biden. <laughs> in 2008, Super Tuesday, 22 states, Obama wins 13 of them. Obama wins the delegates, but he wins it this narrowly. 847, Obama, Hillary. 834, 847. Now, if my math's right, that's 13 delegates. 13 delegates. There's a moment where we're all watching this on television. It looks like a tie, basically. You know, she wins the popular vote by a little bit. You looked at the delegate thing, 847 to 834, this is nothing, right? Yet you are sitting in Chicago in your office, like looking at this going, okay. You know, Barack Obama had his victory speech that night, and I remember talking to him like 3 a.m. And I said, uh, I really think we are now going to be the Democratic nominee. It took a long time for people to understand the significance of this night. But we had learned enough about the demographic strengths of each candidate. For us, it was like that wave in a perfect storm. If we can just get over that wave right. on Super Tuesday, we really liked what was coming the rest of the calendar. It was actually a scary realization. Right. A lot of responsibility comes with that. Uh, so we better not fuck this up. You know, we, we are where we are here. 513, 461. Which is? 52. 52. Okay. So, Hillary Clinton, after Super Tuesday, last Super Tuesday in 2016, she walks away with a 210 pledge delegate lead. And yet, with a 210 pledge delegate lead, the race was not shut down. You look at this, 52, that's a lot smaller. But you think right now Biden is about a 70% likelihood to be the nominee? More? Okay. By March, let's say March 25th. So Georgia votes on the 24th. I think between what Biden is going to get in, like, like in Florida, Mississippi, and Georgia, he could be up 150 plus. My belief is, when it becomes clear to Bernie Sanders' his campaign that this lead is not erasable, yeah. um, he will get out. But, but let's say, for whatever reason, Biden has a horrible debate on March 15th, yeah. and he bombs a bunch of interviews, and yeah. Trump starts running a bunch of ads, and it's hurting him. And there's polls that suggest, actually, Biden is underwater compared to Bernie. Yeah. Well, Bernie might stand and say, I don't think I can pull it off, right. but maybe there's an opening. And it's a big challenge. One of the things we've seen from Joe Biden is that he performs, it turns out he performs pretty well when his back's against the wall. But does Joe Biden continue to perform well now that he's the front runner? It's a large question. Huge question. We've seen many candidates who perform really well when they think they've got nothing to lose. And then as soon as they think they have something to lose, they turn into a different candidate. Well, the last few days has been, I've been knocked out, I've gotten up. Yep. Now he's wearing a heavyweight belt. Yep. Different. Everyone yep. takes a shot. Yeah. Media, opponents, right. you get graded on a different curve, right. for sure.